The made and walled city of Derry, Londonderry, is iconic in recent Irish history for its role in the early days of the Troubles. On this green hill far away were some of the most intensive bombings during our recent conflict, including Bloody Sunday. One of the most charged events during those years were the hunger strikes of 1981. I'm here to interview one of the survivors of the hunger strike, Liam McCluskey, who went without food for 55 days in 1981. Liam lived, but 10 men died during the strike. I'm here to interview Liam and to hear his reflections on his own journey of faith and of reconciliation. I'm also interviewing him shortly after the tragic shooting in Derry of the courageous journalist and activist Larry McKee. What do you remember about the 1972, the, the Bloody Sunday happened then, it was a time of the troubles had kicked off. Derry was really a kind of a real hotbed and for a lot of It was trouble. a hotbed, I remember that. Uh, some of my family decided to go into the Silver Ice March on that day. Uh, I went with them being about 16 at the time. Uh, and I made my way to the front of the march um, when it was stopped in William Street, along with a few other, a few hundred other young lads began to throw stones at the police and army were blocking it. Got a mouthful of CS gas and was forced to the back of the march when the heavy shooting started then. Some of my family were close to being shot, so afterwards, I was very angry about it and uh, six months later I would say I said to a friend of mine go and join the provost and he said hang on a minute there's too many of them getting killed with their own bombs let's join the official IRA and get trained up first and then join the provost so that's what we did. After about a year we left them then when the NLA got formed from the official IRA uh, we joined them. To put it simplistically, in the late 60s, paramilitary organizations emerged and organized themselves on both the Republican and Loyalist sides. In 1969, the IRA split into the official IRA on one side and the provisional IRA on the other. Soon after, in 1974, the INLA was formed, splitting off from the official IRA, which was abandoning their use of violence. It was the INLA that Liam joined. And um, began to get involved in some no key kind of stuff, possession of firearms, a bit of hijacking, and uh, generally uh, targeting the security force but not actually attacking them as such. Uh, then we were arrested uh, and taken to prison. Then, after a year, I was sentenced along with a man called Kevin Lynch, who I spent the time in the Common Road with uh, to 10 years. And we were put into H3 in the maze. Uh, we refused to wear the prison uniform because there was a protest going on against the colonization of what we seen ourselves as political prisoners. And we refused to put on the uniform, present ourselves naked, so we wrapped ourselves up in blankets. Uh, that protest escalated into no wise protest, and we spent the next three years living in our own dirt, I suppose. Uh, we were moved every every couple of weeks into clean cells and then the storage process all over again. Uh, during those moves, there was often a fair bit of violence from the warders, uh, and that in turn led to IRA attacks on the warders outside, and they began to get shot, and there was a lot of aggro in the blocks. So during all that time, I was in a cell 24 hours a day and decided to start to read the Bible and began to pray and over time I began to reflect things like forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and began to think what does that mean for me here where I am now in the his block and I thought that means people who I see as the enemy, RUC, British Army, all that, I need to forgive them to really uh, be forgiven myself for my feelings in life. Uh, I find that a difficult concept mm. in the middle of, of a conflict. Uh, began to say that prayer of St. Francis make me an instrument of your peace every day. And one of the lines in it was that I may understand rather than be understood. So I thought, had I, I tried then to understand how other people might think, people born in the Protestant community, people born in Britain who could end up joining the British Army, getting sent over here, and know very little about it, and get killed as young lads, and it wouldn't do anybody any good. Um, 
So those type of thoughts began to change my attitude towards violence. My attitude was that uh, if our generation could be the one to get the British out of Ireland, then it would end all the generations of bloodshed and that the sacrifice would be worth it. Uh, so all that began to get challenged. Uh, reading the Bible, reading things like love your enemies, the good to those who hate you and bless those who curse you, I was thinking well, that doesn't sit very well with being a member of a violent organisation. And I kind of knew deep down one would have to go, I'd have to either go 100% Republican or 100% for God, it couldn't have both ways. Uh, so things progressed on and Kevin and myself ended up going hunger strike. Uh, Kevin died, I took his place and was on hunger strike for 55 days. Uh, towards the end of it I was blind and I thought I was going to die. Uh, but through the intervention of my mother, I was left in a position where I felt I had no choice but to stop. And so I stopped and taken to the hospital for about seven weeks. And during that time, I reflected on everything I went through and about the Republican cause and about uh, the spiritual side of life. And I was trying to make up my mind what to do. And eventually decided on to give my life to God, to give my life to Jesus, whatever way you might want to talk about these kind of things, but to try a different, to walk a different road. About two weeks ago, early April, there was a protest just up, up the hill there. That's the Craigan Estate, is it? Lyra McKee was was killed. She's a was a journalist. Um, what's some of your reflections on that when you reflect back to the early '70s and then seeing that happening? I thought it was awful that that kind of thing is still happening in this day and age. That after 25 years of violence, that if the provost and NLA couldn't achieve uh, the aims of getting Britain out of Ireland, what did a small group of with little support hope to achieve? Uh, and that this young woman ended up getting killed by one of those young lads who were sent out uh, with guns, um, very poorly trained and all that, and ended up killing that young woman, even now they killed a policeman, it still wouldn't have, you know, it would still be yeah. a, a tragedy for his family and mm -hmm. all that. So I think the Larry McKee, only good thing can be said about it is that it has certainly concentrated minds about trying to get things going again here. Uh, the dissidents, I believe, have no real support and they will keep going low key. We might keep our heads down for a while now, but they will try to keep going low key. But I believe in Derry that has a history of unemployment, having young boys hanging about all day every day with no work and very little hope. They're easy, easy targets for older Republicans to suck them into all that. Mm. Uh, and they feel they have no stake in society mm. without work. All the legacy of the violence has still been felt in Northern Ireland by the older generation and the trauma of it all is passed down to the younger generation. So the violence has, hasn't has achieved very much and has left a huge legacy of pain and people looking for justice. But to look for justice as a means of revenge is not good, but to look for justice to try to get a uh, closure on things is something. But I believe really people need to let go. That's the main message I would give at this point in my life. The only way through is to forgive. If we want the society to get back into any kind of health uh, and try to heal, heal the centuries of division. Desmond Tutu said, forgiveness is nothing less than the way we heal the world. We heal the world by healing each and every one of our hearts. The process is simple, but it is not easy. Liam McCluskey teaches us this through his life. <laughs>